sure it has shocked the nation as well that if in Rajya Sabha the constitution of the land is being torn apart, if this is the sentiment, then it is good that Article 370 is being scrapped. Food security, self security, social security, in terms of special category status, in terms of recognition for uh, languages spoken by tribal communities of the home Mundari and Santan. So several of these areas are being what we have taken up in the zero hour. Hello and welcome viewers, you're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV, your MP with your host Ruti Mishra. And joining us is a very special guest, floor leader of the Biju Janta Dal in the upper house of parliament, Dr. Saswet Patra. Dr. Patra, welcome to Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. Second term in the upper house of parliament. Take us through your parliamentary experiences, the achievements that you see, the challenges that you encountered. I believe being the second term, obviously it has been a great blessing for me from my leader Sri Naveen Patnaik ji who nominated me not once but twice to the Rajya Sabha. And uh, this two stints, the second stints I'm just into in the first year. But this has been a great learning experience. Learning experience in terms of legislation, in terms of parliamentary nuances, in terms of the lawmaking process which has really been absolutely fascinating and to actually delve into the areas of legislation, to understand the dynamics of how governance and policy really runs, I think that is something which has been absolutely uh, you know, eye-opening. And it's, a, what I would say, a lifetime opportunity to learn and to also share and contribute. I think if justice delayed is justice denied, then those under trials also need to be taken care of and need to expedite justice for them as well. I would like to close with one specific aspect that is the need for a national and state judicial infrastructure authority. This is something which is necessary if we want to really create infrastructure that can take care of the judicial workload that requires in our country. In a country of 1.3 billion people, Vice Chairman Sir, we have very limited access to information, very limited access to infrastructure, and very limited access to the number of judges. If we do not have appropriate infrastructure, both at the national and the state levels, we will be not doing justice to the true sense of what this was actually meant to be. Your party also made you the floor leader in the Upper House of Parliament. What are the responsibilities as a floor leader? I think as a floor leader, my leader Sri Naveen Patnaik, the Honorable CM of Odessa, made me the floor leader of the Biju Janta Dal in the Rajya Sabha. And one of the key areas is to ensure that as a party with nine members of parliament in the Rajya Sabha, we have to consistently perform with a single objective of governance, of legislation, and raising issues of the state of Odessa primarily in the parliament, especially the Rajya Sabha. We all understand that Rajya Sabha is considered as the Council of States. Being a Council of States, the voice of states have to really resonate in the Rajya Sabha. And as a floor leader, my responsibility is to ensure that together, all of our nine members of parliament, we coordinate, we integrate our resources, we pool our understanding, and we help each other so that we can contribute the best, whether it's in legislation and debates, whether it's in terms of issuing and talking about zero hours and special mentions, raising matters of national importance, as well as taking up issues of the Odessa state. So you specifically mentioned about all these parliamentary tools to fix the accountability of the government, of the executive. Let's go step by step. Let's talk about legislation. What are the important legislations or the discussion on the bills that you have participated in the upper house? I think uh, I've had the opportunity, some historic bills came in 2019. We have of course had a number of bills since, but I think one of the key areas bills is the Article 370 abrogation, which I spoke about. I spoke about the RTI amendment in 2019, spoke on the CAA in 2019. So 2019 was a year which actually saw a number of historic bills coming in. That in this house, as a one-month-old member, I saw what happened in front of my eyes. It has shocked me, and I'm sure it has shocked the nation as well. That if in Rajya Sabha, the constitution of the land is being torn apart, if this is the sentiment, then it is good that Article 370 is being scrapped. It is good that today we are talking about Jammu and Kashmir reorganization. It is good that this action is being taken by the government on behalf of Biju Janata Dal 
and my honorable leader Shravin Patnaik ji, I support the JNK reorganization and I support the scrapping of 370 and I also support the JNK reservation order, Second Amendment. We believe that right to information is critical to the overall governance and the development of the country. RTI has been one of the hallmark legislations going forward, sir. One of the areas that has actually contributed to transparency and accountability in this nation has been right to information, sir. Sri Sasmit Patra. Manyabar Adhakya Mahoday. Serious. संसदरे आगत होइथिबा नागरिकता संशोधन बिलकु सांप्रदायिक किंबा धर्मीय दृष्टि न देखि भारत वर्षर राष्ट्रीय बृहत्तर स्वार्थ दृष्टि रु देखिबार आवश्यकता रहिछि नागरिकता संशोधन बिल 2019 रा प्रभाव केवल भारत रे नुह बरंग पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश और अफगानिस्तान रे मध्य व्यापी छि ओडिसा एक शांतिप्रिय धर्मनिरपेक्ष राज्य होइथिबारु एवं ताहा सहित बिजु जनता दल सभापति माननीय और मुख्यमंत्री श्री नवीन पटनायक जणे धर्म निरपेक्ष नेता भाबरे बेस परिचित बिल को अनुध्यान करा परे दल अनुभव करी छि जे एही बिल रो कोनोसी संपर्क एनआरसी सहित नाही एनआरसी एको भिन्न प्रसंग एवं ताहा उपरे व्यापक आलोचना करिवारो आवश्यकता रही छि देन ऑफ कोर्स इन 2021 22 there are numerous amounts of bills that I've spoken on. My, I remember still my maiden speech was primarily on the POXO Act. It was a very important thing. Spoke on the Transgenders Bill. Spoke on uh, various uh, bills of uh, national and international importance. And the latest one, of course, was on the MEA Ministry of External Affairs, which talked about uh, how we can take about the ship uh, and various uh, such legislations. I think those are some critical areas that I've been speaking about. And it has kind of ranged. I've kind of tried to keep a range with uh, international relations, areas relating to uh, internal security, areas which re relates to corporate and finance, and to an extent economy. I think these are some of the areas left. So primarily as I rise to speak about the POXO amendment bill, I do that in two roles. I do that in the role of a member of this house. And I also do that in a role of a father of two children, sir. And somewhere as I try to traverse both these roles, one thing is very clear that this amendment bill is a welcome amendment. And the amendments that have been made are extremely crucial in taking forward and strengthening the POXO Act in itself. Let's talk about Zero Hour. Uh, as a parliamentary reporter, I've often seen you articulating the aspirations of people of your state. What are the important issues that you've raised through this parliamentary tool? There are a few very important critical areas of the state of Odisha that I've raised in the Zero Hour in the parliament. The first, of course, is the issue of the special category status for the state of Odisha. One of the key areas has always been that Odessa faces natural calamities very frequently, whether it's cyclones or otherwise. And therefore, what we find is there is a need to have a special category status or a special focus state where a 90-10 ratio of center state sharing should be there in central programs, which would ensure that the state is able to benefit, especially when they are faced with calamities. So I think that is one clear, clear area. The second area was the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, where over the last four years we haven't had sanctioned any houses. The third, of course, is the parboiled rice, and especially that the parboiled rice is not being lifted by the Food Corporation of India. The fourth being the inclusion of 169 tribal communities in the ST list of Odessa. So many of these areas are critical areas for the government and especially for the people of Odessa. And Odessa historically has been neglected over the last 75 years. So my attempt and my party, Biju Janata Dal's attempt, along with all our nine MPs has been to be a voice for the people of Odessa and to strongly assert the need for certain specific aspects, food security, self-service security, social security, in terms of special category status, in terms of recognition for uh, languages spoken by tribal communities of the home Mundari and Santa. So several of these areas are being what we have taken up in the zero hour. Also, let's talk about the questionnaire and also particularly unstart questions. Now, while we were doing our research, we found that a lot of questions related to space, to atomic energy. Where does that interest stem from? 
I believe that is a personal interest. My father used to work for the Indian Space Research Organization. He started his career with that and then he went on to Doordarshan and uh, information and broadcasting. So as a child, when you grow up, you know, your father usually talks about the time when uh, Professor Yashpal used to be the director of the Space Application Center and then Indian Space Research Organization, how it was the mother of uh, information and broadcasting as we know. And satellites and space has always fascinated me. And therefore, when I have asked certain questions, they have been with an intent to actually delve deeper into what are the various uh, developments that the, gov the government and as well as the nation is doing in space and technology. And I found really fascinating answers that have really come. It has helped me to appreciate our space exploration programs, whether it's the Chandrayaan, whether it's the Mars mission, whether it is the developments that we are doing of space applications into telemedicine, into uh, climate change, and, or, or as simple as probably geosatellite, uh, uh, you know, analyzing the urban habitats and trying to reduce uh, the urban population in a way that becomes more structured. So many of these applications are finding its place through space applications and I'm very very fortunate that I've been a part of this journey of understanding space explorations better. All right, uh, let's also talk about the proceedings of the house. Now Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar has nominated you to the panel of the vice chair in the upper house. How has been the experience because I know that there were disruptions that you saw while you were chairing the proceedings and now how do you compare the two? And how has been your personal experience? There are many young members who have come in very new to the house. And I just wanted to probably take this opportunity to tell you how you have promoted the youth members of parliament, the young members of parliament. In August 2020, Sunday had a phone call in the evening saying that I have been appointed to the panel of vice chairman of the Rajya Sabha. I was surprised. I said I'm only 13 months into the Rajya Sabha. Sir, you were the person when I called in the evening, sir. Do you think I'm capable of presiding over this August house? Do you think I'll be ever able to do justice? You said, I believe in you. I stand by you. You do your work. You keep working hard. I believe it's a wonderful experience sitting and uh, being a part of the legislation process. And uh, I'm really fortunate to have been nominated to the panel of vice chairman. And in doing so, I've had times where there have been disruptions, yes. And there are also times when you actually have a very in-depth view of how the debate runs through the House. So yes, at times it's also very challenging because you actually go through certain disruptions that actually changes the mood and the sentiment of the House. But though I do not have much of a legislative experience background, I've had this wonderful support from my chairman to always, and my deputy chairman, to move forward and contribute in a way. So despite, so a number of my colleagues always say that you're fairly young and how do you get to you know, be the vice chairman of the Rajya Sabha and preside over its proceedings. But I would say it's the tremendous support that the chairman and the deputy chairman always had. And I must thank my honorable chairman of Rajya Sabha for his faith and his trust in me of having nominated me to the Rajya Sabha's vice chairman. It's been three years running and it's been a wonderful experience so far. I'll again request you to commence the calling attention to the matter of urgent public importance. It is a matter which is to the situation arising out of rising cases of post-COVID complications. I request all the honorable members to go back to the seat and let us have a discussion of the calling attention. All right, let's also talk about the parliamentary committees uh, where considerable amount of work gets done of Parliament, you're part of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Petroleum. How do you assess the importance of these committees? And of course, I'll also talk about your contribution and your participation. I started my career in 2019 with the Parliamentary Committee on Education, which was known as HRD. Then I moved to the Committee on Law and Justice, and now I'm in the Committee on Petroleum and Natural Gas. Petroleum and natural gas has a lot of uh, importance, especially today. And my contribution in the community is trying to understand how we can move from being a fossil-based energy, petroleum, natural gas uh, dependent nation to going to become one which is going to adhere by the G20 and by the COP27 thought processes of becoming a carbon net zero by 2070. So that's a huge leap in terms of energy security. So petroleum and natural gas, there's going to be a shift. How are our public sector undertakings really serious, are ready with it? 
I, I must tell you off the record, in fact, we are on the record as well, but the fact is that I have found that our public sector undertakings of the petroleum and natural gas have been doing phenomenal work in becoming more and more ready as we go forward into trying to move from a fossil-based energy to becoming more and more resilient in renewable and new sources of energy. And they're doing remarkable contribution in recycling. Recently, if you've seen, Honorable Prime Minister was wearing a jacket made of uh, uh, renewable and renewed uh, plastic polymers. So I think there are many such things that are really being done by the petroleum and natural gas. They're also trying to minimize the effects of uh, fossil fuel impact in carbon. I think that's a wonderful experience. Prior to that, law and justice I had the opportunity to be there when the mediation bill came for discussion. Apart from that, various reforms that are being planned through the legal system. And prior to that, in the Standing Committee on Education, we had the opportunity to discuss the national education policy. So there have been some really notable areas where we've got this opportunity to contribute. And having been a professor in my earlier stint, it has been always fascinating to read, understand, and share my views. And these parliamentary committees are instruments that actually gives parliamentarians the right platform to be able to discuss, to be able to debate, and to be able to really delve deeper, which you cannot do inside the parliament on specific issues. Absolutely. Since you talked about the stint as a professor, we also understand uh, that you're a lawyer as well. Now, this amalgamation of legislature and judiciary, I'm sure it comes very handy for you when you discuss about bills or when you discuss about the issues of the country. It does, especially because having been a lawyer now and in this stint, what it really does is lawmaking, the understanding and nuancing of lawmaking comes from the idea of understanding law in itself. It's actually a paradox, I sometimes think, that we are into legislation and lawmaking, but many a times, do we really understand what's jurisprudence? Do we understand the basic principles of law? So I believe when we debate and discuss, we do it from a perspective of a social impact on society, which is right, and that is how it should be. But also, this understanding of law, when what comes from a lawyer, it also helps you to really rationalize and see what effects of that would be reasonably adaptable within the legislation framework and thereby be acceptable in the framework of law itself and which of that would actually be relevant to social impact. So sometimes in the verge of social impact, you feel certain clauses should be made that would really make it more robust, but probably it may not be relevant looking at the larger impact it would make in terms of law itself, whether it would, be, it would be able to withstand the scrutiny of law, if I may say, and whether it would stand the scrutiny of the courts as well. So therefore, this experience of being a professor as well as a lawyer amalgamating together helps me to appreciate it better and probably make better sense of it. Absolutely, Dr. Patra, that's a very legit point that you raised. But going ahead, what, are, what would be your uh, priorities in terms of the issues of your state or perhaps the national issues? I believe the state of Odessa requires more resources going forward. One of the key areas that in the federal structure our nation is always provided for is a strong union but also equally strong states. And my firm opinion is that as a, as a parliamentarian coming from the state of Odessa as well as belonging to the Biju Janata Dal, my party, and because we are in government in Biju Janata Dal in Odessa for the last 23 years and counting, and our Chief Minister Sri Naveen Patnaik ji has been there in government since the year 2000 as the Chief Minister. There are many key areas of Odessa that needs to be actually espoused and talked about in the parliament. And for me, it's a matter of fear. Why is it a matter of fear? Because the daughter of Odessa is a daughter of Odessa. That's why it's a matter of fear. 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 But when the story of Nari Shakti is a matter of fear, somewhere in my mind, there's a question of the Women's Reservation Bill today. आज इस सदन में क्यों नहीं है जब एक महिला रब राष्ट्रपति आज राष्ट्रपति भवन में खड़ी है आज वो सदन में क्यों नहीं है दस साल हो चुके हैं मान्यवर और कितने साल चाहिए होंगे जब भी महिला संरक्षण बिल आएगा इस सदन में बीजू जनता दल और मेरे नेता श्री नवीन पटनायक जी सामने खड़े होंगे उसको समर्थन में ये वादा ये आश्वासन मैं सदन को देता हूं बीजू जनता दल की तरफ से बड़ी खूबसूरत योजना है प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना मान्यवर हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल होना चाहिए सबको घर मिलना चाहिए तो मान्यवर एक सवाल मेरे दिल में आ रहा है उड़ीसा के सात लाख लोग आज उससे वंचित क्यों हैं? आज उड़ीसा के सात लाख लोग 
जो वेट कर रहे हैं अपेक्षा में है कि हमें प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना मिलेगा कब मिलेगा मान्यवर एक सौ उनहत्तर वन सिक्सटी नाइन कम्युनिटी उड़ीसा में आज भी इंतजार कर रहे हैं कब उनको एस लिस्ट में उड़ीसा के शामिल किया जाएगा ये मैं कोई टीका टिप्पणी नहीं कर रहा इस सरकार या उस सरकार पर चालीस साल में कई सरकारें आई कई सरकारें गई क्या ये 169 कम्युनिटीज एक संप्रदाय जो है ट्राइबल के हक से जो है वंचित है क्या उनको नहीं मिलना चाहिए मान्यवर मगर आज हमारे आदिवासी भाई बहनों के लिए अगर हम हृदय रोता है तो हो मुंडारी और भूमिज भाषा जैसे संथाली भाषा को आपने एट शेड्यूल में दिया उनको क्यों नहीं दे रहे देना चाहिए मान्यवर so these and many of these issues are critical whether it's about women's empowerment the passage of women's reservation bill i remember my first uh, zero hour when i came to parliament 2019 was the women's reservation bill and even in the last uh, session the the pre the budget session that started in the first part in the address and motion of thanks to the honorable president's address i mentioned about uh, women's reservation bill which is also very important and very strong to our party the bjp janata dal and our leader shri navin patnaik ji so many of these issues are key issues the national issues and they also state issues and they need to be addressed in right earnest absolutely dr patra thank you so much for sharing uh, that vision with us and all the way best for all your future endeavors thanks well viewers that's all we had for you in this edition thanks for watching and stay tuned to sunset tv goodbye for now from my side